And uh, Shandu graduated in 1981 and then moved to New York, where he's now, uh, I think he's, a, he's like a financial consultant investor out there. But he's, he's always been a lifelong friend of Obama. He was at Obama's wedding. Uh, he uh, was at the White House, I think, just two months ago for a Ramadan dinner. And he's a big, you know, $100,000-plus financial bundler, bundler for the Obama campaign. Did, were you, did you have any sense of, of Barry Sotoro's religious leanings at that time? Did he indicate any um, leaning towards uh, any particular religion? Well, this is complex because I, I – and I, I just want to be very – truthful that that when I met Barack Obama and Hassan, I thought they were atheists. I thought they were mainly Marxist socialists in their in their ideology and bearing. So I saw them as uh, secular and I and they were both smoking and drinking at the time. And and I didn't know so much about Islam and its prohibitions against smoking and drinking. Although I understand, you know, there's Pakistani... So, so uh, uh, Shandu, he was a backslidden Muslim. <laughs> I, well, yeah, and I, I found out about the Muslim connection, you know, only later. Uh, all I can truthfully report is, is they were definitely uh, not Christian, and, and that the, 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 the primary sense I got about them was, was that they were pro- profoundly uh, committed to, to Marxist ideology. What, makes you, what made you um, think that they were profoundly committed to Marxism? Well, part of it was the context of, of uh, Caroline telling me that, that Barack Obama was, was, quote, one of us. And, and that, that meant that that he was part of this revolutionary subculture uh, that, that that we were all, you know, active in at the time. So that was a that was a big deal, right there. And and this is one of the things I've been trying to explain is I did not take my status at the time as a Marxist revolutionary lightly. Uh, to me, it was a serious business, and it it meant in a sense that I was an enemy of the state, and and I. You know, I, to me, it, it was a life or death matter, and that it was it was affecting my career, and my education, and my friendships, and so for. Are right, you tell me tell me about your commitment to Marxism? You, I mean, you're saying it's a life or death matter for you. I mean, you you were. Yeah, it wasn't some idle, you know, sophomore year silliness. This this was this was a big big deal um, to to me. I I had grown up a poor. My my um, mother was from uh, Soviet Arm. Well, my mother's family was from Armenia, which was then part of the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I was the eldest of five boys, and we never had any money. I, I remember there was there was raw sewage, you know, floating up in the backyard of our home in California because my dad didn't have enough money to have the sewage line fixed. Uh, or I guess we had a septic tank. He didn't have enough money to, to hook it up to the, the mm-hmm. sewer line. And so I, I I went to Occidental College feeling, you know, that it was unfair that somebody with my hard work and academic skills and um, public speaking abilities that, that, that I didn't have the same equal life chances as the wealthy kids that I was going to school with. How did you get to Occidental? If- with that uh, you know, it's funny. I, 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 I always thought I got there on an academic excellence, but that's not true. I was there on a track scholarship. Mm-hmm. I, I ran the – you can't tell it from – I'm overweight now if you look at my photos, but when I was in high school, I ran the mile in uh, four minutes and 23 seconds. Man, you were fast. So I, yeah, no, I was a great track athlete, I guess, at the time. So I, I was at Occidental College on a, a track scholarship. When I was there, mm-hmm. uh, so I, so you, you had this um, you know chip on your shoulder that you know uh, the American system was unfair and, and it had to be changed. It had to be radically changed. Yes, and I I, I believe that that the the lives that people live 
that if we only adjusted government policy, if we redistributed income, if we had government ownership of, of you know, our, our uh, means of production, that we could create a much better, much more prosperous, much happier, freer world for people. And, and I, I sincerely believe that with, with my whole heart. And I, I was literally willing to die for those beliefs. Uh, no doubt about it, because I, I was convicted in, in my heart that that was the, uh, you know, that that, that 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 was the best thing for all of us. Okay, now you mentioned uh, the young lady Carolyn. That was her uh-huh. name. Now was was she your girlfriend at the time? Uh, yes. Okay, and she said to Barack Obama, Barry Sotoro, that he, meaning you, is one of us. Oh, no, it was the other way around. She told me. Oh, uh, okay, yes. Yeah. So she, she said to you, Barry is one of us. Right. And, and you, that, you knew immediately what she meant. Well, yes. And also she knew him extremely well because she was taking a political theory class with Barack Obama taught by uh, Professor Roger Boucher, who was a prominent socialist pr- professor at Occidental College. They were, she was in the class with him, so she got to know him and see how his mind worked. So it, it, this wasn't just, you know, sort of like an idle, off-the-cuff, random thing. This, 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 this was like a team. Mm-hmm. Did, of, you, did you have uh, additional conversations with Carolyn about Obama? Uh, you know, not that I remember okay. clearly enough to be mm-hmm. in print. On okay, that, was, this, but, was this a one-time encounter with Obama? Well, I, I think it's more, to understand the context, that you'd have to say that Barack Obama was, even though he was a sophomore, he was a big man on campus. He was the hot, cool guy that everybody wanted to get to know. And because he and, because Hassan had so much wealth, Barack Obama was able to live in a very big house in Eagle Rock, California, and they were able to throw these parties you know, every couple of weeks with lots of booze and loud music and plenty of room for dancing. Well, where did he get all of his money? I mean, I'm talking about Obama. How did how did he get to Occidental? I, you know, I, you know, he wants us to believe that you know he came from, you know, family. You know, his dad was in Kenya. You know, herding sheep. <laughs> well, he was he was there on a scholarship, uh, but his scholarship seemed better than. The, my scholarship was it a foreign student scholarship no i'm I, i'm i'm pretty certain it was just a regular standard uh-huh. u.s scholarship but the difference is on my scholarship i had a work study component so mm-hmm. even though i was at oxy on a scholarship i still had to work in the cafeteria i worked in the mm-hmm. audiovisual department uh so i and there's no but obama didn't have obama. to work Nothing, absolutely not one word of Barack Obama working as part of his scholarship. But I, I think he was also sort of uh, 